What's better than in-car technology? I'll tell you, discounted in-car technology. And Amazon Prime Day is upon us. So what does that mean? It means that Atoto have sent me this awesome head unit, which is the F7 XE, which will be discounted on Amazon Prime weekend. And this is an eight inch head unit, which has wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, which is gonna be cool. Now you guys should all know who Atoto is. Uh, they are all over Amazon. They're one of the biggest brands known for Android head units. This one is not an Android head unit though. It actually runs a version of Linux, but that's irrelevant. But the point about this one is that it rivals companies like Kenwood and Pioneer because this has wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. Now Atoto are generally known for the quality of their products and the fact that you can get them on Amazon means that you can have a look at the reviews of these products and you get the additional Amazon warranty as well, which makes them particularly interesting. Now I will remind you that I don't get paid to endorse any company or product, and that includes this Atoto device, so uh, the review that I'm about to do is going to be completely based on my own opinion and, and how I find it working, basically. So without further ado, let's get out of the box and have a play. Here it is, the F7XE. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is it's a singled in unit with an eight inch display which is connected using these brackets here. Now this bracket is a tilt and slide, but not in the general sense of the term. You can't just tilt it and slide it when it's actually mounted in the car. You have to do it before you mount it in the car. So if you have a look at the mount here, you can see that it has this additional screw here. And the reason for that is because you can basically tilt the screen and then put the screw in the other hole uh, so that you can get the tilt that you want. And the same is for the, uh, the height of the screen here. You can move it upwards or downwards by removing these screws and putting the screw into one of the other screw holes. So it is giving you some customizability, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, some of you are gonna be going, yeah, but it's single DIN. Well, they've thought of that as well because inside the box, you also get uh, this sort of plastic cubby hole thing, uh, which obviously along with uh, with this will, will make it a, a double DIN unit. Now on the front, in the typical Atoto fashion, you have these lovely big physical buttons. And that's what we like to see. Uh, if your car doesn't actually have steering wheel controls, it's nice to have some physical buttons. And on the left-hand side here, you have a USB port, a reset button, and an auxiliary input. And on the right side, you have a micro SD card input here to expand the memory. On the back of the unit, you have a Wi-Fi antenna, a bunch of RCAs, so you've got the subwoofer out, then you've got rear left, rear right, front left, front right, RCA pre-outs, You've got your reverse camera input here, and then you have an auxiliary input video and audio. You've got your main loom connection here, a microphone input, and then over here you have a USB which is marked phone link, which is for directly connecting your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay phone. But obviously it's wireless, so you don't need to do that. Also in the box you get the single DIN cage, the plastic cubby hole thing to make it double DIN, the Wi-Fi antenna. You've got three different looms. Um, they've given you an option of how you want to wire it up. It's quite nice that they've done this. So you have two ISO looms. They've marked them A and B. And the only difference between these two cables is that the red and the yellow power cables have been reversed. Some cars have it one way, some cars have the other. So if you plug it in and the unit is not keeping memory, it means you've used the wrong cable. That's uh, what these are for. And then you have one loom which has just spliced wires. So if you want to splice it in and you, you don't want to use an ISO connection, you actually have a cable uh, to do that as well. You have an external microphone for the hands-free. A loom which allows you to have a front camera and two video outs for back monitors. Some brackets, some screen protectors, and some radio removal tools. And the manuals. 
All right, let's go into the car and check it out. And here it is installed in my Saab 93. So you're probably gonna notice straight away that the head unit is protruding quite a way away from the dashboard itself. And uh, you'd be right because it, it is quite far. And funnily enough, it should actually be further away from the dashboard, but I've actually pushed it in further than, than it's meant to be to try to get the best kind of situation in this car. Now during the unboxing, you would have seen that it's a singled in unit with a bracket and then a screen. So the distance between the dashboard and the screen is that bracket that they have installed on it. So that's why it's protruding quite far out. This Atoto is gonna be great for specific applications where you have dashboards which are at an angle or are only singled in. There's multiple reasons why this would be a benefit. Obviously in this car, it isn't, but we'll move on from that. So let's switch it on and see how long it takes to boot. Right, the ignition is now on. Showing the Saab logo, very nice. And there we go. And now it's just connected to my Android Auto automatically, wirelessly, um, but we're gonna to come to Android Auto later, so I'm gonna exit out of that for the time being. So it booted up pretty fast, so that's perfect. That's, that's exactly what we want to see. Well, let's start with the look and feel. So the dashboard of this head unit, which is what you're looking at the moment, is very, very simple indeed. You've got your time and date in the corner here. You have your Bluetooth music control here, and then you've got four icons uh, prominent on the bottom of the screen. You've got the Android Auto, the radio, I think that's something to do with Apple Music. I don't know, I'm not an Apple user. And this is Apple CarPlay. And you've got some more options here, which I'll go into it in a minute. Up the top here, you've got your home button and your back button, but you actually have your home button, physical button down here as well, which is really nice. Uh, you've got your brightness control here. So if I tap it, it's dark. It's halfway on here and it's full brightness here. So you've got three different modes. Uh, the little square icon here is meant to be a phone. If you tap that, it's gonna connect you to Android Auto or to Apple CarPlay if you have a compatible device connected via Bluetooth. It's showing you your phone signal here, your phone battery life. So if I tap on this button here, it will show you everything else that this uh, head unit can do. So you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, the radio. If you chuck some music on a USB stick and plug it in, then you'll be able to access it from that button. The Bluetooth audio mode is very, very simple indeed. It shows the track name, the artist, the album, and you can control it from here as well. You've got your equalizer, which I'll go into later. You can make phone calls by uh, using the phone functionality. And finally, your settings. Anyway, all the settings are very, very easy indeed. They're very clear, uh, very, very simple. There's no uh, very complicated things here at all. It's nice and easy. Right, let's talk about the screen itself. Now, as you can see, uh, the sun is shining on the screen and it's still very, very easy to see. So that's really, really good. And I know from the specifications of the uh, F7XE that it has a screen resolution of 720p, which should mean that it's nice and sharp. The beauty of this head unit is there's no real complexity to it. You connect your phone to it using Bluetooth. You just find the available Bluetooth connection for this head unit, tap on it, and everything else is practically automatic. But one of the main things that you buy this head unit for is the fact that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is what's gonna give it all the functionality that you actually want to have in your car. And I have tested both and I'll show you now. So if we go to CarPlay here, here we go. So you've got access to all of your apps on the screen just like that. And it does actually look pretty good on the on the screen. I, I'm very happy actually with the way that Apple CarPlay operates on this screen. It's very, very quick and it looks all right. So whatever you've got installed on your phone for navigation, Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, TomTom, Tom, all of those apps are gonna work through this head unit. And then also YouTube Music, Spotify, all of those music apps are also gonna function straight through this app head unit as well, just like any other Apple CarPlay head unit. So this automatically connects to your phone as soon as you turn it on essentially. So you don't need to take your phone out, you don't need to do anything fancy with your phone. You can, it can stay in your pocket or in your handbag or whatever and it will just automatically connect to this radio as soon as you get in, okay, wirelessly, perfect. So yeah, really happy with the way that Apple CarPlay works on this unit. Let's have a look at uh, Android Auto. 
You connect your phone simply by connecting it via Bluetooth. And here's Android Auto, and yeah, it, it works perfectly fine. I've got access to all my apps, uh, all of my music and my navigation apps are all here. So uh, from an Android Auto perspective, again, just connected via Bluetooth, it automatically connected and that was it. So yeah, it, it works absolutely perfectly fine from that point of view, which is great. So let's talk about vehicle integration. There's three things that I really look for with these types of head units when sort of integrating it into the car. The first thing is, do your steering wheel controls work? And yes, yes they do. And uh, to make them work, it's very, very simple. You go into the menu, you go into settings, you go into system settings, and then steering wheel control set, and then key settings. And then you can choose what you want the buttons on your steering wheel to do on here. Very, very easy to work indeed. Really, really good. The second thing is the boot logo. Now you did see that I had Saab come up on this head unit when I turned it on. And the way that you do this is by going into the settings, into display settings, and then boot logo settings here. And you're gonna find that there's a massive variety of different brands of car right here for you to select to set this up, which is really, really good indeed. And the third thing, of course, is it has buttons on it and they light up and you want those buttons to match the color of the other interior lighting in your car. So this, again, is very easy. We go to settings, display settings, and then panel key lighting. And then you can choose out of six colors what you want these uh, buttons to be. Nice and easy. One of the very important things with radio head units is of course the quality of the audio. So let me show you that now. So we'll just go into the settings here and go into equalizer. So the first thing that you see is the fade and balance settings. Very, very easy. You can uh, move this around to your heart's content or you can just use these to uh, adjust the uh, balance and fade. And then if I hit the EQ down here, it gives you the 10 band graphic equalizer and you have a bunch of presets that you can hit down here as well. Now, it doesn't give you quite the control than any of the other Atoto head units. So the A6 and the S8, for example, uh, obviously they run Android as an operating system, but they have a lot more uh, customizability. And, and to, to my ear, those head units do sound better. Uh, but this does sound good as well, so uh, that's not something that you would need to worry about if you was considering buying it. Anyway, so uh, I'm not going to give it any scores because it's not an Android head unit, so I can't. But what I am going to do is give you my verdict. It is a good head unit. It's especially good if you can only put a single DIN head unit in your car. And it has all the features of wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, so that's cool. I hope you found this video interesting. If I missed anything or if you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below to ask them and I'll see what I can do about answering. If there's any other head units you'd like me to review, let me know and I'll see what I can do about that as well. Uh, other than that, if you like this kind of content, please do uh, subscribe to my channel because there will be more.